joined now by Johnny Clock uh, to discuss the, the future is wood. And uh, Johnny joins us from Oslo. And the sun rose this morning in Oslo at 3.49 a.m. It will set tonight at 10.42. That's a long day. Uh, Johnny, I do have some friends at Belfast they are Muslims. And we have, a long, we, have a long, we have long days as well here. And Ramadan was tough this year but I think it'd be tougher again in, in Oslo. But look, thank you for being with us. Um, nothing has energized the debate around uh, the future of wood in construction, like the Voho Tower in Berlin, and you are the genius architect behind it. The company is called Mad Architecture, but I don't believe that means mad architects. I believe it means something else in Norwegian. <laughs> but Johnny- Believe what you think. Uh, Johnny, <laughs> Good, good to have you with us, uh, and I see, I see your logo is upside down. Uh, we, we, we really love the Voho Tower. It's more than just uh, your tallest timber structure. It's going to be more than that because it brings with it great values, which your company has and which your colleagues in, in Berlin have. So you have the floor, Johnny. Thank you for being with us all the way from Norway. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, and as you said, our logo is upside down, and that's sort of how we are. Um, thank you for inviting us to talk about our projects. Um, uh, as you said, I'm Johnny Clark. Uh, I'm a partner of Mad Architecture in Norway, and we're an interdisciplinary firm with approximately 100 people. Uh, the company I work for deals with architecture and urbanism, but we also have companies working with interior communication, neighborhood planning, product design, and landscape architecture. And our most recent adventure is our own cafe and bar in downtown Oslo. So when the pandemic loses its grip, um, please come and visit us. And it could be recommended during summer when, yeah, the sun sets early and goes down late. Uh, and uh, Mad Architecture is all about our people and they're essential for the output in our projects. And this image, we're accidentally in Berlin, uh, a picture of an appropriate for this talk, where my main focus will be our recent competition win in Berlin. Uh, but first, I need to address the green shift going on in architecture today. Over the last years, the building industry has changed radically to make buildings more sustainable, very often with the main focus on energy and technology. At the same time, we are producing, we continue down the same path as earlier. We extract vast amounts of materials. We produce technical installations, square meters emit carbon dioxide, produce large amounts of waste at a rapid pace. And we can't continue down this road and we need to make some changes. And as we see it as architects, there's different ways of doing this. One is to demolish less buildings and transform them instead. Another version is to transform the building and use reused building materials for your additions. And this is an example from downtown Oslo, uh, where we made an office for um, Spaces, a co-work firm, where we used 70% reused materials in the building from diff 25 different sites. And of course, as we're talking about today, you could build in wood or timber, depending on what you wanted to call it. And there's so many things I could say about the benefits of building in wood, but the ones we found most important is the following. Wood is renewable, it's recyclable, it's natural, and it's carbon positive. And wood products have a low energy projection with a way less waste water, for instance. And of course, being that I'm an architect and not an engineer, uh, it's visually pleasing and it can have positive effects on the health and well-being of residents and end users. Some findings actually say that it can provide stress reduction, lower blood pressure and heart rates and boost effectiveness and concentration. And because all of this and more, uh, using timber or wood in our architecture has become one of our sets in the toolbox for developing a more sustainable architecture for the green shift. And this is also one of the reasons why the clients of our project Motebe project management, management made it a prerequisite to use timber in the Boho project when they announced the competition in the summer of 2020. A competition with high ambitions, both architecturally and socially. The brief was clear, a high rise in Berlin, which is quite rare actually, and even more rare was to be built in wood in some shape or form. And of course, it should be in accordance to the new Berlin House Light Built, uh, excuse my German, uh, which can be roughly translated into the new high rise model, which is developed by the authorities in Berlin, which sets a set of ground rules for how you program a high rise. It's a new way of building high rises with a social edge to it. They invited 10 offices to participate August, September last year. 
uh, we went into a second phase and we were announced the winners early in 2021. The plot is located in the center of Berlin, uh, right south of the Brandenburger Tor in Berlin's central district, Kreuzberg. And our inspiration for the project uh, is two main things. Firstly, as you can see to the left is the Berliner Höfe or courtyards. And if you ever walked around in Berlin, you know these traditional Höfe courtyards that you wander around and can find all over the city. There are lush courtyards and lots of small secrets to discover. And secondly, uh, to the left, you can see the Mischung. Uh, and that is um, when you have the Kreuzberg neighborhoods that typically consist of a traditional block, uh, block building uh, with the Kalea structure. And there's a term from them called the Mischung. In this regard, they talk about a traditional city block consisting of dwellers, inhabitants, small workshops, tailors, kiosks, and shops all together in one block. A small society in itself, a traditional city set up all over Europe, both in Belfast and in Oslo and in Berlin. And this inspiration led us to, led us to this project concept. You take a typical uh, Kreuzberg quarter block with its structures and courtyards, if you interpret that into a diagram, it's a city block with enclosed courtyards. Our concept is basically to turn everything inside out, or von innen nach außen, which is said in German. Uh, and when we turn everything inside out, we make open courtyards or Höfe that connects to the surrounding parks and neighbors and adapt the building to the context. And then in the last part of the diagram, we stack the volumes over each other instead. And the result is a fragmented high-rise timber building with integrated courtyards, a Wohof, if you will. Um, a vertical interpretation of a typical Kreuzberg block. And this sketch has stayed with us all the way from the early phases of the competition. Uh, when you zoom into the plot of our project, you can explain the project in eight simple steps. To the left, uh, you can see our plot showing the outline of a typical Kreuzberg block, showing the typical sizes and shapes, organization of a mission that I mentioned. As you can see, it's a bit on the small side. So then you have this grip where we turn everything inside out and the juxtaposition of the buildings uh, and volumes connected to its context and establish a foundation for a new city block in just inside out. Uh, and the plot is situated between two parks. So the composition and volumes of the courtyards connect the adjacent parks east and west of the plot of the project through pathways and shortcuts, and thus establishing a seamless green connection through the project and neighborhood, which is in a very important way. And as you can see to the right, uh, fitting in a high-rise building to the context and urban scale is very important. And by giving what the volumes varied heights that adapt to its context and its neighbors, for instance, you have um, the volume closest to the main street is given the same heights as the typical height of a typical Berlin block to keep the street scale and human scale of a building. Uh, and then you have the vertical stacking. Uh, where you place the recognizably scaled volumes on top of each other and the diverse composition of the building structure on the site, varying height and width, adapts the building to the scale of the city and the neighborhood and the people living there. And as you can see, the tallest part of the building is strategic strategically placed in the middle to fit the scale of the city. And of course, public access and social dimensions are very important. So a publicly accessible stair is added to the base of the building. And the base of the building in this sense is the eight lowest floors, which, which connects the four volumes you can see to the right. And this makes the building's public and commercial program easily accessible from the street level and creates an attractive vertical connection between the city, the neighborhood, and the building's residents and users. And of course, as you can see, the orientation is important because the high rise works on both on a macro and a micro level. And as we talked about on the micro level, the human scale and the street level is very important. And in addition, by shifting the volumes slightly every seven to 10 stories, the tower gets an interesting shape, an interesting silhouette towards the city because there's not that many high rises in Berlin. And as you see, the result is a vertical interpretation, a vertical city, if you will, and by both building it and wrapping wrapping it in wood, it becomes a warm, soft, tactile, and very different, friendly kind of high rise. And this you can see in this image where you see how the lowest part of the building connects to the streets. 
you see the small squares connecting to the urban setting, uh, establishing sunny courtyards with south facing playground areas for children and a meeting spot to the north we can, where you can have the access, uh, access to the residential tower to the left and you have the beginning of this public stair connecting the street level to the rest of the base of the building. And as I mentioned, as mentioned in the summary of the talk or the overview for this agenda, this project is not only an ecological paradigm shift, the building program and content is also quite different from a typical residential project because it's all about sustainability in its extended form. Because when we in Mad Architecture and our client Utebe and several others talk about sustainability these days, we always stress the fact that Sustainability is not only about environmental sustainability, it's also about financial sustainability. You need to be able to follow through and the Excel sheet needs to work to be able to follow through. And of course, definitely not least, social sustainability. And we talked about environmental ecological thoughts behind using wood, but the social part is just as exciting. And this is how you can see this vertical interpretation uh, of the Kreuzberg block. Uh, to the left, you can see how the program is organized. Um, the orange and yellow colors indicate public uh, and educational functions, and the blue and uh, pink ones are residential. So the public base of the building stretches from the ground floor and up to the seventh floor. And you can find a mix of commercial space, retail space, education, social functions, as well as residential spaces. And of course, the different residential topologies is spread out and mixed between the fourth and the 29th floor of this building. And it's a mix of sizes and ownership models throughout. It's everything from lease apartments to owner-occupied apartments, subsidized housing, studio apartments, family dwellings, and collectives. 60% of the building is residential, 25% is commercial, and 15% is social infrastructure, cultural education. Small neighborhood in itself. And of course, making the common areas, as you can see to the right, is very important. And to make attractive, safe, and interesting neighborhoods, it's important to work with these degrees of public accessibility. And the public areas are mainly in the base, connected through the public staircase I mentioned, wrapping the building. And these areas are designed to function as meeting areas, crossing points for residents of the building itself and the neighborhood at large. And the further up you get, the more private areas gets for the residents. The outer spaces connect to the surrounding and the parks, like I mentioned earlier, and enhance their qualities. They're always connected to the indoor program. So it's a big mix there as well. Everything is designed to be universally accessible and the spaces are all lush and green and planned to fit a specific use. And the public areas and the public accessibility is very, very important here. So as you can see to the diagram to the right, the red are the vertical staircases and the green are the public and commercial functions. And they're placed on the ground floor and in connection to this open public stairs. So it's everything from shops to a kindergarten to a museum to a library. And on top you have a public sauna for the residents and for the city at large. Uh, and as mentioned, wood is important. To the left, you can see a diagram of the construction, and the whole building will be made of wood, except for the basement, and a few, and the vertical course will be built in reinforced concrete. And the use of steel is limited to only a few small amounts of joints and reinforcements. The height of the building is 98 meters, making it the tallest timber building in Germany, and it consists of four volumes, six, seven, nine, and 29 stories above ground. Construction-wise, the wood construction is a load-bearing skeleton of columns and beams in glulam and CLT slabs or massive timber slabs. In addition, glulam is used for secondary beams for the facade to hold the visible timber frame facade. And wood is also used furthermore as a cladding for the inside. To the right is a ba basic concept for the energy concept and compared to other usual standard SE projects, the Boho reduces its environmental footprint by at least 50%. And this is done through innovative energy and mobility concepts, sustainable material use and reduced use of water. And it's even planned to produce some of its own thermal and electrical energy, as well as reduction of water use and carbon emissions by the same 50% as I mentioned. And when it comes to mobility, thanks to its central place in the city, it's close to everything. You don't need that much transportation. So parking, all of those things is limited. 
And of course, using wood is very, very good when it comes to building because wood is lightweight and it's, it makes the build faster and less noisy, and which is a very good uh, use for the urban scale. And this is the overview of the uh, building. And as mentioned, the benefits of using timber is also further developed when it comes to the facade. Timber is lightweight and very suitable for prefabrication and transportation. So the facade is planned to be a modular system to be prefabricated. And of course, there's a different set of modules or topologies that we can use depending on the internal program and the project needs as it goes along. And this will be developed through the development of the project. So you can make, for instance, solar panel versions with vertical expressions or lodger versions, as you see to the right, with integrated planting boxes to create these lush facades or creating different full-size windows, horizontal divisions, and even more. And these modules will be further developed throughout the development of the project. And as you can see in this elevation, the shifts and horizontal modules and the different building volumes creates a dynamic expression. It's not visible to the eye at first glance, but when you look at it, it creates dynamic and it has this kind of fun and playful look to it, which is quite also rare for these kind of high rise buildings. And of course, a view from the inside of one of the apartments. As you can see, the timber structure itself becomes a feature in cladding and using the uh, wood as much as we can, except for the roof due to fire regulations. Uh, you get this uh, timber, timber oasis with uh, spectacular views all over Berlin. And both we and the developer have gotten phone calls and emails from potential buyers from day one after this project went public. So there is definitely a big, big market, and I think it's a big market also outside of Berlin um, and the Nordic countries we work with. As mentioned, the project is still under development. We just won the competition, and we're starting to work with the regulation now. And of course, as many of you know, building takes time. Of course, with wood, a bit less time, but nevertheless. So as mentioned, we're working with the regulations and hope to get a building permit within the next couple of years. And maybe the project will be done in 2026, hopefully. And hopefully then uh, both we and you guys can all meet in Schönebergerstrasse, which is the name of the streets. You can see in the foreground here, we can meet at the Urban Plaza, maybe have a drink there. We can walk the public stairs up to the playground with the kids and watch them play and maybe have something to eat in the common canteen where the uh, residents and the neighborhood will make their dinners together. And maybe we can end the day at the sun on the top floor chatting with the residents about how it's like to live in Germany's tallest timber high rise. So that's our dream and thank you very much for letting us talk about this. Any questions, Martin? Johnny, thank you for that um, stunning uh, presentation. It really is spectacular. I used to work in Berlin a lifetime ago, and uh, to have a building like that, Grace Berlin, would be fantastic. I have only one question before you go, and you really have reminded us about the importance of sustainability as, as regards people, because sometimes today we've been speaking about technology almost for its own sake, uh, but sustainable, mutually supportive, healthy, uh, communities, progressive communities are very important, but why are you not building this building in Oslo? Um, well, um, this kind of mix, for instance, like the social mix yeah. you have of apartments in Berlin, like this mix of subsidized housing and ownership apartments, that's um, not common in Norway. Okay. Everything is very commercial when it comes to the built markets or resting markets. Uh, uh, but of course, this is a project that we show to our clients in Oslo and show this is what they do in Berlin. Maybe we can do this in Oslo as well or somewhere else in the world. So we use this as leverage to sort of have the developers thinking, this, giving the social aspect. But of course, it's, it's got a lot to do with city planning, I think. You know, this Hochhaus light built or the Berlin high rise model. It's a statement from the Berlin municipality that says something about uh, when you're building these high rises, which has an impact all over the city, you need to have a certain social edge to it. And it sets certain dem demands. So 
It's the combination of politics and architecture, I think. Well, look, thank you. And we know Berlin does have a certain edge to it. We look forward to seeing you in Berlin and in Belfast and perhaps also in Oslo. So, uh, Johnny Clock of Mad Architecture. Thank you. Perfect for, pronunciation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for being with us. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck with Voho Tower. Thank you.